started, I'm the, you know, I drew the lucky straw being the new guy, get the lunch room right before lunch, so I'm sure everybody will pile in at 12.20 and we'll restart some of this stuff. But uh, thanks for, for coming out today. Um, my name is Eric Watson. I'm the new district conservationist with the National Resource Conservation Service, or NRCS, here in, in Riverton in, in the Lander Field offices. So thought it'd be a good opportunity, one, introduce, get my, get my face in front of some, some folks, as well as is talk about um, some NRCS program, uh, cost share assistance, uh, conservation programs that we offer, offer here in Fremont County. So <clears throat> those of you that are not familiar with NRCS, so first thing is first, so we are a non, non-regulatory uh, federal agency. Um, that kind of comes uh, with redu uh, reduced shotguns and things like that will show up on people's places. Um, but we, we come out, uh, and work with private landowners uh, on your guys' um, privately owned uh, operations. So, uh, invite only, again, non-regulatory. We're out there because you invited us or you, you want us to come out there. So, um, so we, you know, we work uh, in conjunction with your local uh, soil and water conservation district boards. Um, here in Fremont County, there's three. Uh, we have the, the Lower Wind River, Conservation District that's here in Riverton, uh, over in Lander, Composia, uh, and then up north in Dubois, you know, the, du the Dubois uh, Soil and Water Conservation District. So there's there's uh, there's three districts, uh, soil and water boards that, are, that, that meet, um, and you know, we we work on based on the, the oversight um, and direction that, that the, the local uh, work groups and the, and the local conservation uh, district has provided. I'll try to talk over that. I've usually never been in a place where nobody can hear me, so if that's a problem, speak up. I, 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 oh, it's, it's, I don't want to make cold, so. Uh, Shut it off? Shut it off. There's a number of programs, at least in NRCS, um, that, that we that we offer and that we work with. Um, and, and to be honest with you, it's, it's through. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with, with federal appropriations and things, it's it's through the the the, um, the farm bill, right? The farm bill gets passed every four years and gets um, negotiated. We'll use that word, you know, by Congress and, and, and through those federal appropriations. And so, um, you know the. You know, actually, if if anybody that, that knows anything about the farm bill, there's actually very little in the pie, actually, for conservation. So um, that that make up the farm bill, and so that's those are the the appropriations that, that I work or that we work through. Um, and you know, these are just a couple of the the staple programs, if you will, that NRCS offers. Certainly, um, you know, the conservation technical assistance. That's that's what uh, SCS before NRCS that agency. Um, you know, the four father, fathers worked on, um, you know, that, that just is a technical service that we provide uh, ag producers that, you know, may have some questions, you know, that are happening or that may be going on, you know, in their operation that, that we are able to come out and provide that assistance um, with, again, no, no financial benefit to that, but um, the, you know, NRCS is staple, it's been around a number of years. Um, you know, the, the EQIP or the Environmental uh, Incentives Program, that's, I mean, that's, that's NRCS's bread and butter with some, um, with cost share assistance programs, things like that. Certainly the up and coming um, Conservation Stewardship Program, CSP, and we'll talk more about these as we go through here. Uh, and also NRCS is, is the lead agency for um, agriculture easements, um, you know, that, that do, are able to, to be implemented on, on private um, private lands. So again, like I mentioned, the CTA, you know, it's a non-cost share program, uh, provides technical assistance to farmers and ranchers that, that may just, you know, may be starting out, uh, may be having, um, you know, have a couple questions that may, you know, on their landscape, uh, they just want a little insight uh, with some things that that's certainly something that NRCS <coughs> has and, and can provide, um, you know, the. The no strings conservation, if you will, um, you know, of what our programs 
uh, that we provide. Um, again, you know, EQIP is a, is, is a big staple for us. Again, it's a voluntary conservation program uh, that, it, that promotes, um, <clears throat> you know, agriculture across all landscapes, um, all land uses, uh, and it's, it, again, it's, it's more of a, uh, able to, to implement structural conservation as well as management, you know, on, on agriculture uh, lands and uses. Again, you know, you dive in down a little bit farther, it, you know, it, it offers that financial and technical assistance that comes with it. Um, you know, from, and we'll go through some of the practices, you know, certainly some of the, the staples there in Fremont County, um, you know, irrigation related uh, structural practices, um, you know, some of the grazing land, water developments, things like that are, are usually the, um, the poster child, if you will, um, for, for what the equipment provide. So, um, you know, available practices go through some of these. Uh, we can go through some of them in depth if you have some questions. Uh, you know, honestly, the sky's the limits with a lot of things uh, anymore. Um, again, the, the things that I grabbed there are certainly uh, ways that I've used EQIP in, in, in other locations and other places, and then what has actually been utilized here in Fremont County. So, you know, livestock pipelines, tanks, spring, de spring developments, um, you know, the solar pumps that go along with that, um, you know, that's certainly solar in the last 10 years has really made a jump. Certainly is not as expensive as it once was, and it's certainly more reliable. They've really dove in and, and uh, have overhauled <clears throat> and been a, a big stride in technology with the, in the photo cells and, and, and people being able to, to utilize that aspect, you know, out in the middle of, of uh, our vast rangelands uh, here in Wyoming where there isn't a power pole that that somewhat can service those. Um, you know, integrated pest management is certainly a big one, uh, as we know in our landscape with cheatgrass, um, you know, coming and, and, and being prevalent in some places. Um, you know, windbreaks, uh, range and pasture seedings, um, you know, reservoir, other water related um, wells. Um, sometimes it's, it's not, um, I guess known that you know NRCS does help with cost share assistance for drilling uh, livestock wells. We don't dabble in the in the domestic side of things, so I can't can't help you uh, you know on that aspect. But certainly for for uh, if it's designated livestock and, and uh, agriculture related, um, you know we do have that availability. Irrigation improvements is certainly a big one, certainly in, in Fremont County. Um, <clears throat> irrigation water management that, that that is associated with that. Uh, so and that would tie in and, and take that conservation to the next level, you know, on, on irrigation improvements such as pivots, things of that nature. Uh, as you guys are all aware, the, with the Boysen Initiative and, and some of the environmental impacts that are that are coming, um, you know, through that and have happened. Certainly, you know, irrigation water management, managing the, the amount of water and, and uh, targeting timing and placement is, is critical, and that that's something we look at with that. Um, certainly on, on a rural side of things, uh, the high tunnel initiative was very big for, for NRCS, uh, you know, extending those growing degree days, um, you know, for, uh, for those backyard farmers, if you will, or, or uh, small CSAs, um, things of that nature. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to be a, a full-fledged farm and rancher to be able to qualify for NRCS programs and, and what we have. We do, we do dabble, you know, in that high tunnel. Um, element, um, you know, throughout throughout what we do. Certainly, cover crops. Um, you know, being able to to look at you know the, the soil health uh, impact and, and what that all comes into play. That's been a something on the forefront. Certainly, from from NRCS and, and if you, anybody that, that that listens to you know any of the, the agriculture related you know podcasts, that's definitely been a been a, <clears throat> a big topic of discussion. Uh, coming forward, certainly nutrient management, um, that's a pretty big umbrella uh, pro uh, practice uh, and availability and, and use you know, for that. You know, below frost slide, uh, buried surface HDPE, uh, surface supply HDPE for, for those livestock pipelines, um, certainly would be, would be a practice uh, we can definitely be looking at there on a big holistic approach um, you know one thing certainly here again going back to that soil health initiative 
of some things of, of you know trying to to, to improve uh, the state you know in which this, this technology um, you know has been improving and certainly the science um, really you know doing the grassroots uh, approach to some things so we'll practice at NRCS has available in the standpoint of management, you know, is, is residue tillage and no-till management. Um, you know, again, it's been a been something that's coming down. Um, you know, everybody understands the purpose and the, and the premise of, of that, but it kind of encompasses, you know, what we're looking at. Certainly, wanting to um, and a big impact of why NRCS is even even around. Um, you know, was developed. You know, back in the Back in the dirty 30s of, of uh, reduction of soil uh, erosion across the landscape, and this is just taking that uh, again to that next level um, of some things. A couple pictures there. Again, I mentioned cover crops. Um, this is one of those practices that you can get really innovative with some things. Um, there, how many of you, well, from a show of hands, and if not, but something to think about. Um, you know, you guys that have hay, hay rotations that you're in for five or six years, and then you're breaking out for a couple years in management, um, and, and try to renovate those stands with small grains, and then going back into, um, you know, back into a hay. Uh, there's, you know, there's the availability and uh, uh, practice instead of going in for for small grains um, kind of aspect, whether it's hay, barley, or, or maybe you're even going to go into, the, you know, maybe some some malt, um, you know, species of, of that nature, there's there's availability to, um, you know, if the cover crops have not been utilized by you in the past, we've used used those in replace, uh, in, in the place of, uh, you know, in those renovation years or some things, that that could be a, an alternative. Again, concept there is, is uh, you're growing monocultures for five years, um, you know, we're gonna spike the diversity up a little bit, you know, those cover crops, um, depending on on the farm bill and the practice, there is the availability that you can hay those. Um, you know, if you use that for a year of uh, of hay, um, we'd be targeting. You know, definitely. Um, you know, the, the benefits of that certainly breaking the, the disease cycles. Much of you're doing, you know, with that renovation year. Um, you know, usually the grass in, impact of those stands, and that's why you're breaking them out anyway. So um, that's something to be thinking about. Um, you know, conservation crop rotation, guys that are that may typically, um, I know we don't have a lot of that here based on, you know, the, our uh, environmental factors, but, you know, the anybody that's <coughs> that's in those uh, uh, crop um, fallow rotations, um, you know, they're only essentially growing 50% um, covers every year on the landscape. That conservation crop rotation would be able to provide, you know, uh, an incentive payment for you to be cropping, you know, two of three years um, kind of thing. And, and that, I mean, that can even be brought in, um, you know, into the hayland rotations. It's, it's a little more difficult, um, this practice to incorporate that, but it certainly has that availability. Again, kind of that concept, big approach um, kind of thing. You know, we talked about irrigation water management, nutrient management. Um, I'll probably go out on a limb here. Um, certainly, out of all the things that, that are happening on, a, on an agriculture base of, uh, basis of things, um, you know, around, if you will, the, the Boysen Initiative, I, personally, I feel that these are two, two practices that, that certainly um, can shift that curve in what we're doing, um, you know, as agri producer, agriculture producers and, and certainly in the ag markets of, uh, of, of things, some things. You know, certainly when you're looking at algae blooms and the whole chemistry that, that, that's happening there, um, you know, there's, in order for that to happen, um, there, you know, there, there has to be that available nutrient in the, pot, in the water. And in, in no, act, no way am I, um, you know, pointing the finger toward ag producers because I actually feel the exact opposite. I think on the standpoint of, of nutrient management, it can be everything from an ag producer to a backyard, um, uh, you know, bluegrass grower. Um, I think the, certainly the aspect of um, nutrient management goes that big. Um, it's not that uncommon, right, that, uh, you know, the co-op is selling 40 pound bags here in, in April and there's no, you know, there's no uh, limit on how much, you know, anybody can apply, you know, to their backyards, you know, uh, put it on in droves, right? Well, rainstorm comes, 
that all goes down into the sewer system, right? And the, and the fresh water, excuse me, the, the drainage system, stormwater drain systems, and, and it has to go somewhere, right? So, you know, certainly on a, on a nutrient management standpoint, that's, that's a broad umbrella that I think affects uh, certainly all of us, but more toward NRCS programs, that's certainly something that we can look at uh, on an acre per basis of uh, an incentive program for, for you to look at, you know, doing some soil testing, um, some nutrient management, putting together some budgets and really figuring out what is needed at that time of application for those plants, for the plant requirements. Um, it, you know, I use a story, I trot it um, around. I was, before before coming back to Wyoming, I'm originally, you know, from Wyoming, I was up on the, on the High Line in Montana. Um, and, you know, had a couple of gentlemen that, that utilized the nutrient management on, on the standpoint of, of showing what, um, trying to figure out when, the, when their crops need it uh, and the uptake. And, and it wasn't uncommon that they would save 50% of their input costs by just knowing what, what nutrients needed to be applied at that time uh, and the timing and the, and the availability of that. So, um, you know, it's, it's certainly in, in other aspects of and placements of some things um, that, that could be a, a huge, as we all know, the bottom line of, of making it to the end, right? And, and being able to produce next year, um, you know, may not be going to get, you know, the same operating note because that's what you used the year before. So, you know, certainly um, bankers like it. Um, it's something that they they enjoy when they walk in and say, no, I, I don't need to borrow as much money because I'm not having to spend as much in, in input. So um, that certainly has a big impact uh, here and, and can, can do that. You know, irrigation water management, again, it, it helps with that. Uh, you know, pro providing a, uh, an offset payment for, for folks to, to look into the management. And it's not going out there and putting a, a, you know, a quarter inch on there just because on the same time every year just because um, it's the way it's always been. Um, there, we have, there's a number of practices, whether, you know, it's, it's going out there and, and doing moisture by feel, uh, you know, a checkbook, kind of a drawdown method of, of, of applications and where you start as a baseline um, for available you know, water holding capacity in a soil and certainly water holding availability, um, all the way up to you know, an advanced level uh, where there's you know, irrigation water, <coughs> excuse me, irrigation water uh, moisture sensors that are out in your field that are telling you, giving you that, that replicated data that are tied into your pivot um, you know, that are showing, yep, I need a quarter inch here and I only need a tenth over here. Um, and so, again, those are, are certainly uh, a big impact, I think, and a, and a widespread practice that I would like to see utilized a little bit more here in Fremont County because, again, it's, um, you know, going back into that, that holistic big approach, you know, obviously, as, as you guys being in the field and, and know, right, the more water you flush through a system, that's that much more nutrients that you're flushing by and not being able to utilize as well too so uh, going back again to that that high tunnel system um, it's been you know it's been widely used um, it, a lot of times we you know we've we've been working you know if it's not in the in the rural sense uh, and working with those producers there's a lot of uh, uh, farmer and rancher's wives that have they've actually uh, you know diversified their operations as well a little bit you know that, that they're um, you know, producing more, extending that growing season, you know, underneath those high tunnel systems uh, as well. So um, that's certainly. You guys do a top zero on those or something? We do, yep. We do a, um, a flat rate um, on those and it's based on the sizing. Um, there is a payment cap, but I think how the payment cap is um, this year, I think there's a maximum of, I think it's like 6,500 bucks, um, you know, that we're be willing to put to to those projects, and that's one of the larger systems. Again, it's, it's based and, and paid by a square footage, so you, we can size that, you know, depending on preference and what you want. So you um, can like square foot or? Exactly, yep, that's how we pay it, uh, and how we look at it. So, you know, we've done everything from, uh, you know, a 10 by 10 all the way up to a 30 by 72. Do you have an example of what kind of high value crops would be grown in here that would work in that? So it's, it's every, there's really the sky's the limit. The intent of the, the <coughs> of that high tunnel system is to extend that growing, growing season, right? Being able to, the, 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 the polyplastic that goes over the top obviously brings in, you know, more heat. So um, <coughs> have had several different things, um, you know, that, that, have, that guys have, 
or operators have put in there from uh, you know starting their tomatoes early. Had um, some local uh, CSAs. Uh, there's a if you've ever been between um, Cody and Pal under the uh, east side of the road there, there's a gentleman that uh, that has a number of hoop houses. Um, I started a career in Pal, and, and, and that was really when the when the the uh, high tunnel initiative really was was boiling. Um, and he got in, and he was providing. Um, vegetables for a number of the, the local restaurants there in, in Cody as well as Albertsons. So he would do spinach in the early spring, um, tomatoes, you know, all the squash, carrots, potatoes. Um, under one of, uh, I was in an NRCS project, um, but he, you know, he had artichokes and, and the whole the whole nine yards. So I've seen a lot of things, uh, different types of, of crops grown, um, you know, under them. Um, I don't think it's necessarily targeted to anything. Certainly we battle with growing three days here in Wyoming and, and uh, we've seen, you know, growing three days, or excuse me, growing, extending those growing seasons, you know, up to 65 days by, with this addition and what, excuse me, what's under, what's growing underneath. How long does it take to get into that program? Uh, being eligible with, with FSA and NRCS and, and an application site visit that there was an, a once a historic garden in that place so that's it's it's pretty um, minimal now. so there's certainly some some initiatives that NRCS is focused um, you know we talked about the soil health initiative and that that's very broad that's everything from um, you know, cover crops to, to soil health um, practices related. Um, and we talked about with reduced tillage, things like that. Energy conservation is, a, is certainly a big one. Uh, I know with the with the change in the administration, that's definitely going to probably be on the forefront, probably more than it has in, in years past. Um, looking to see energy audits, seeing where we can improve, you know, and reduce energy across that, um, as well as. Um, you know, the Sage Grass Initiative has been a big player. Most of you uh, that, that probably have had, um, you know, experience with rangelands, and certainly in Wyoming, it's been a gone forefront. Um, you know, trying to protect that that bird, um, you know, and that species, you know, from listing as well. So, again, like I said, the Working Lands for Wildlife and Sage Grass Initiative, um, you know, it's that initiative to, to look at certainly, and it's not, it may be targeted for sage grass, but actually, you know, there's a, there's a lot of many different species, and, and certainly, uh, you know, livestock operations that benefit from from making that some changes, some management, some things like that. Um, again, it's the, the the premise of the of the of many of the initiatives um, on that side of, of as for aspect is you know to uh, help ensure that there's some sustainability going. Uh, forward, both on the standpoint of, of economics as well as for livestock and, and, and wildlife. Talked about the, the energy conservationist, or excuse me, the, the energy um, conservation initiative. Um, you know, looking at uh, you know reducing um, you know the the amount of energy that, that goes forward from that. There's certainly as as you're looking at improving some of those systems, um, you know, across. Um, you know your, your operation. You know maybe as simple as going from you know a, a pumps uh, enclosed system to um, maybe there's some gravity flow and some other um, structures to put in there to, to, to reduce those energy inputs and, and outtakes. You know we've talked about the soil health numerous uh, numerous times through that. Um, you know really targeting again it's a it's an umbrella practice and initiative that, that is that is focused. Uh, really, the sky's the limits on, on things that you can look at. Um, you know, from the very micro uh, aspect of it to, to full fledged, full farm. Um, you know, number of practices. Um, you know, it goes into that concept of, of uh, you know covered soil. Uh, you know, living the plant root. You know, in the in the the soil profile at all times. You know, really reducing. Um, you know the, the widespread full tillage um, aspect of some, some things and, and that bare soil component. 
Certainly, uh, uh, in the past, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, the conservation stewardship program was a lot bigger than it certainly is now. Um, it's evolved a lot. There may be some of you guys that, that participated in, in the CSP program, you know, in 05, 06, all the way through 2010. Um, it, I, would, I would caution you, uh, um, it's not the same program as it, as it once was. Um, it, there's, it's pretty, pretty innovative. It looks a lot, feels a lot like eQuist, except it's still on that five year um, contract period. Uh, everything from structural practices uh, to, to management, you know, across the landscape. So the, uh, you know, the, the one time story and, and uh, the motto at selling point, the CSP, used to be was, um, you know, reward the best and encourage the rest. And that certainly probably carries through uh, a little bit more than, than, than just general equip. Um, you know, the, there's a lot, it's a lot, uh, I think it's better lucrative uh, CSP than it, than it once, once was. Certainly fits in. I know when it initially came out, it, it, it targeted and focused on the, the cropland um, commodity producers. That, I would almost say, is, is a 180 from what it is now. I think it's actually livestock um, operators have, have had, a, have had a, a, will go with better succession, uh, better uh, adoption of, of many of the enhancements that their, um, you know, that the program provides. Um, you know, and again, if there's this, the, the, the opportunities are endless. Um, you know, with, with a lot of the NRCS programs, it's, it's basically getting to the table and, and figuring out what your intentions are and what you want to do, um, and then, you know, applying those across the scale of uh, some things. Um, you know, certainly one of the wide, more utilized CSP enhancements of the past is, uh, you know, pushing cabin gates back to coincide with some, um, certainly some, some early green up of uh, some things and, and not having to feed as much you know, in that last trimester of some things that, I mean, that's just an example of one of the enhancements, um, you know, that are, that are available under that program, so. So, one thing that's happened in, in recent years is under CSP, the, the uh, Grassland uh, Stewardship Initiative. Um, that, I mean, that is a, it's a, certainly a more lucrative part of, of, of CSP. Um, you know, it's a five-year contract. Um, I think the next slide kind of gives you the, the guts of some things. You know, land eligibility, um, you know, it basically boils down to if, if there's actually base, uh, you know, base quantities available, um, you know, and if you're willing to, to utilize uh, and keep that in, into grass uh, and graze it. So there's a $18 an acre um, uh, payment that's associated with that, um, that you, you know, that that, that's your starting point based on, on where you are, um, you know, going forward. Certainly, uh, you know, working and utilizing, um, you know, a grazing plan, um, you know, for that, uh, for those acres going through. So, um, there we go. You know, it's a five-year contract. You know, unfortunately, it can't be renewed on those acres, but it's, like I said, it's, um, it's certainly a, a, an avenue. Uh, you know, and the, the premise behind that is again is that um, you know grassland conversion, keeping keeping things uh, in cover, and, and certainly you know providing some some assets that way. We touched on earlier about the easement program um, that is available um, <clears throat> you know through NRCS for you know you can either do a, a perpetual easement that you, you know that that uh, have had you know a number of, of operators that have utilized that. Um, uh, you know, an encompassing uh, easement, uh, all the way you know down to a, to a 30-year easement. Uh, you know, some things whether there's a, a couple places on you know on your operation that um, you know you may want to look at on the standpoint of, of uh, it being. Uh, and the concept behind that is obviously keeping you know working lands and, and uh, working lands and, and the, the threat of conversion. Those are the different types of, uh, of easements. The, the agriculture land easements, again, that's more of on the working lands and the side of the things, uh, you know, farm and ranch. Uh, and then the, the wetland reserve that we've always had uh, to, to, to keep wetlands in, intact and, and, and certainly, um, you know, available 
for all the many benefits uh, that go, you know, alongside with those. So I will, you know, I would tell you, you know, programs are competitive, just as they they are everywhere else. Um, don't wait. Certainly, um, jump. You know, encourage all of you guys. Um, you know, if you if you do have interest, um, you know, in participating in NRCS programs, um, you know, get a hold of us and and uh, we'll see where we can go with some things. Typically, the, the application deadline uh, for that for that next year farm bill money is usually at first part of December here um, and that fall. Uh, you know, in the perfect sense, I'd love to sit down with you. Uh, early throughout the summer and kind of get an idea, um, come out and, and uh, inventory the you know, property, get a baseline of where we're at, and then kind of go forward so it's not a, uh, a shot in the dark so much, um, you know, in the, in the, when we're going into winter. So, um, the equip, like I said, that deadline has passed. That was in, in uh, <clears throat> December 1st, and that's for, for 2021 money. Um, if you're interested in, in potential 2022 money, um, you know, don't don't hesitate to get a hold of me, and, and uh, we'll make sure that we get an application on file going forward. Um, they haven't announced the CSP deadline yet. I, I imagine that's forthcoming. There's um, some other things that they're they're trying to to uh, iron out at, at headquarters and some things, but um, you know, be looking for that, and that'll certainly be posted and, and uh, put out um, soon. And as I mentioned before, there's no no deadline for for technical assistance, just make sure you reach out to, to uh, one of us and, and get a hold of us if you get a schedule so so we can get out there uh, and take a look. And with that, um, I'll entertain any questions that, that may be out there. If not, um, I have literally been trying not to look over here on my right shoulder because those cakes look really 